All right. So I want to say hello to everybody today. Uh, thank you for joining us in the Essence of Transformation. And I have this wonderful guest with me today whose name is Leslie Gould Barkman. Thank you, Leslie. I had met Leslie a couple of years ago, and her her autobiography and the list of the healing aspects that she has brought into the world as her contribution to the world is so staggering that I'm going to have her speak about it for us herself. Because one of the things, first of all, you're a Reiki master, is that correct? Not a oh, master, but yeah. No. Reiki master, okay. No. It's emotional coding. I'm not quite sure how to frame it. That's a read your book. I read your website, yeah, and there are so many titles for what you are doing that that's one of the things that really uh, fascinated me when I met you several years ago. Mm -hmm. There's such a wide range mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I'm an outsider in this area. This is not my area. Okay. So I thought there seems to be such a wide range mm -hmm. of skills and abilities and, of course, healing psychic gifts because <laughs> I consider everybody to have these healing agents in their fundamental dynamic and in their intuitiveness mm -hmm. that that brings them forward and forward and accelerates their gifts. And I found that that was so for you when I read your biography. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind sharing with us some, some information about you, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Yes, it has been a journey. And sometimes where I am now, the way I am now, so um, so woo woo in a way. I don't know what I know. Yes. Where I can feel things in my body. So, mm -hmm. but I just yesterday I had uh, something happen and I felt those chills in my body. That's confirmation for yes. And I thought, you know, this is who I am now. Like I, I it, this wouldn't, you know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have ever guessed that this is what would happen to me. And, and it happened just as I was learning all these different um, techniques uh, and healing techniques. And yes, there's, you know, I've, a struggle as uh, someone like me who does a lot of different things. It's hard to come up with one title or one thing. Yes. And I see that with other people too. Like, exactly. You yes. kind of have to list it up. But I have come down to it's body, mind, energy, healing. I'm a body, mind, energy therapist. And I put body before mind yes. because I believe it is. Yes. And the new um, the new paradigm in, in psychology agrees. It is. It is our bodies because that is where our subconscious is, yeah. that it, our nervous system by and large. Mm -hmm. And you can only do so much with your thoughts. They help to change those words and to do those affirmations. But if your subconscious mind is not on board and if you're doing it, but you still feel that knot in your stomach, um, you're not 100% in. Yes. So I'm just so <clears throat> really enamored with the subconscious. And the more I work with it, it is the the uh you know it is our google it is our very own lie detector it is our very own <laughs> google search yes yeah. right absolutely it, it really it, it is i totally agree. every single second of your life your subconscious knows and you can recall and so and and i'm so that's the direction i'm going in is much more of that subconscious i was the nervous system i tend to do more somatic work yeah. So, and that's a word people are starting to understand, and that's just body focused, mm -hmm. right? And so, rather than, so I'm a therapist, but I am very much an alternative therapist. And um, because what we say and how we feel, um, it's the feeling that's the truth. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So, so right? Sure, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, if you're talking, so if someone's talking, I'm going to say, what are you noticing in your body as you say that? Because I may see a look or a breath or something, right? Yes. And so that's the nervous system part. Yeah. And then now with the emotion code, which is another, an energy healing technique yes. um, that, that helps to release trapped emotions in your body because they're stored in your body. Yes, yes. Right? Sure. And if they're stored long enough, they can become imbalanced so much that they become disease. Yes. Right? So I absolutely agree. On that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so this now allows me to muscle test um, about what's sort of true and what isn't, how much in alignment you are with, you know, I want to be a whatever it is you have yes. a goal, yes. and we can test how much on board is she. 
and you can actually test and get the level. And then we ask, well, what's in the way of the rest of it? Yes. And we can clear it. Yes. You know, so so that's been very much, it is, seems to be very changing my direction. So it's that plus the somatics. Yes. But basically, I'm interested for myself and for others on getting underneath the story. Yes. Underneath our stories, which we all have and we all repeat. Sure. Right. So sure, absolutely. It, right. And then, of course, the spiritual aspect gives you that that bigger picture. Yes. Um, who am I really? The blueprint, the subconscious, it is their spirit involved yes, with that. Absolutely. It's, a div- it's your divine connection. You want to speak Good. into the right person? I know I yeah, am. Yeah, I know <laughs> I'm getting chills just talking to you. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, and I'd love to hear what you have to share. Sure, sure. I, there is so much to, first of all, a lot of what you're saying is very integrated in my own psychology and my own way of being in the world and what I've done with others and continue to do. Mm-hmm. One thing that I especially respect about how you think and how you do this is the very detailed analysis at the different point of connection. Mm -hmm. That's one way that I would frame it just for myself. Okay. Um, What you're looking for and and also the root of the connection. And I have to ask you, have you, I imagine in school and your education, you learned about Carl Jung. And was that a fundamental foundational person in your life in terms of your understanding and your desire to continue to understand the impact of the subconscious and of course it needn't have been yeah at all yeah i'm simply curious well he's certainly one of you know carl young and carl Ro- rogers yeah jerry rogers right it, when i was in school getting my master's that those were the ones the humanitarian the existential um and yeah carl young for sure i mean yes. he was such a pioneer and i don't yes. you know i gotta say i don't know a lot of details about him, you know and yeah. actually Studied him a lot, but yeah, yes. of course, we covered him in school and definitely speaks to me. Yeah. And just uh, a little a note of interest because I just did this program on sun signs and I'm going to be doing it. Um, Carl Jung was a Leo. Okay. And um, one thing that I discussed about Leos is how idealistic they are mm-hmm. and they go their own path, they go their own way. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's just kind of interesting. I found that I learned a great deal about Carl Jung when I was in my 20s, and that that is some considered a Jungian humanitarian astrologer. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. 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 Because there's, like you said, okay. without referencing the subconscious, yeah. without allowing it to be as integral and as powerful as it is in the, um, in the individuation process, the maturation process, mm-hmm. You'd be at a total loss. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how I see it. Okay. Could you explain that a little bit? Yes. That the subconscious, as you've said, mm-hmm. is just simply such a foundational element of not only our personality, but our growth, that it can inspire or help us expand our growth, or or it can prevent it. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. when it prevents, when it's prevented from being integrated and holistic. And there are a variety of other terms we can use for that. But when it's prevented, when it's hidden, when it's refused to be conscious mm-hmm. and consciously applied to oneself, that's when I find people get severely depressed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They get sad. They get confused. And I believe it contributes to a lot of issues with organs. Yeah. Falling apart. Yeah. Because I do believe that each organ represents some part of the. And they also generate emotions. And they generate or get, or get and generate emotions. So they will regenerate. If you suppress too much emotion right. from your subconscious. Right. They did. Yes. Right. Yep. Well, and you you know, it's just it was suppression. Yeah. Um, and and through the suppression, I don't know if you're familiar with the book. Um, the Divided Mind, Dr. John Sarno. No, but it sounds wonderful. Is, yeah, you would love it. Yeah. He, and he's a pioneer. And again, it's still, you know, doctors, it's very hard to get doctors to understand yeah. what you, what we are talking about. Oh, yes. Right. And, yes. and forget about energy. I mean, you know, but without yeah. energy and without our subconscious and our nerve, that's, that's what our subconscious mind drives our lives more than our conscious mind. Yes. Does. And that's what I think it really is about. So, and the only way you, it, it's sort of like when people talk about our angels around us, you know, people are like, why aren't they helping me? And you have to say, well, you have to ask. Yes. Right. They're just the standing around waiting for you. Ask. Oh, okay. Yes. Subconscious is the same way. 
Sure. And so when you sure. connect to it and you can ask, you can find, as you were saying, why is it suppressed or what's in the way? Right. right? And what's in the way are trapped emotions. Yeah. Emotions that we never felt fully or expressed fully. So something happens and you trap it. You yeah. just you just don't want to think about it. You don't want to feel it. And it goes in the body. And we can actually find where it is in the body, what it is, what emotion it is, where it is in the body, and when you trapped it. Yeah. And sometimes who you trapped it from. Sometimes it's inherited. Sure. Sometimes it's your sure. conception, right? Sure. And and so the emotion code is one way to do that, um, to, to get to that subconscious mind and to clear some of that stuff away, yeah. which when you ask it to, it's pretty painless to do so. You don't have to go in and actually talk about it, right? Hypnotherapy does a similar thing with beliefs where uh, things that, you know, or challenges we're having yep. are based on a belief that we formed whenever, a long yes. time ago. And yes. it's an early childhood, right? Sure. And we could go sure. back to that moment yeah. where um, we go back in time via the emotion. Yes. So when did she feel this this emotion of overwhelm before some time and using the sort of the uh, the dialogue from talking to someone, you add that the last time because you might be coming in with um, uh, my boss. I'm ang angry at my boss. I want I'm just so angry at my boss. Yes. Okay. So that's anger. OK, what was another time that you felt that way? Yes. OK. And then we go back in time and we tap our third eye just like that. Yes. And you go back and your subconscious like a Rolodex old school or like a Google search will just find a moment in time, three, four, five years old, one, it could be in utero, it could yeah, exactly. be in time, yes. and it allows us to go back and therefore then feel it all, express it all, and make choices in mm -hmm. using our imagination. Sure. We can even fly off in a unicorn. It, it, it doesn't matter because our imagination believes everything, everything we, we tell it. Yes. Right? And so that's yes. another way to get at these beliefs. And then we clear that, we come up with a new belief and we heal that inner child who's been holding this belief for so long. So same idea. Yes. And then the nervous system with somatic work, again, back into the body. And and um, I guess it's also the subconscious mind, um, but I think of it more as the nervous system because it's sensations. Yes. And um, that when you focus on them, they'll have, they may have a shape, color, size, texture image, word, or phrase that comes with it. And that gives us information. So that's that's what we work with is that, you know, sort of three floors down of information that we get that um is really where it's at. Yes. You know. And um and yes, the Jungian approach, um, the humanitarian, the uh and the, you know, and the um I can't think of oh the existential. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And then bringing in, so I know you said there's so many things, so I'm just sort of yes, I connecting the dots, right? Sure, absolutely. So you can see how they all connect. They're yeah. really not that different. And then, um, you know, the energy is really a reflection of also the this, this subconscious. And it's, and you probably know this, the energy, our energy field comes on before our body even grows. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right? I have photos of it. And yes. Yes. Right here. Yeah. That it's just yes. the coolest thing, right? It is. So it's there first. Um, and, and, you know, and for any of us to not believe in energy, it's like not believing in air because we can't see it. Yeah. Um, it's yes. it's sort of ridiculous. And, you know, sometimes people are ill and it turns out it's it's energy and a lot of work, you know, with with meridians, with with the flow. So yeah. so the energy is sort of everywhere. And then there's, of course, matrix energetics and ways to move that energy and to get into the matrix of it where you where the potential is because yeah. your energy field is potential yes right yeah so and and if it's potential then that takes us into spirit right and yes. the timelines and the the choices you make of which timeline who which uh, that we are on but there's parallel ones that we can also be on yes right like yes. loopy people refer to that everyone seems to love sliding doors mm -hmm. um where the actress gwen paltrow i think she was as, you know, she she misses her train and her life goes one way. But if she had gotten on the train, it would go. Yes, exactly. Way. Yeah. And that is what they say is parallel. Yes. Yeah, Timelines, you know. Yeah. And and giving people access to that and then speaking with with the angels and with God and with our higher self, which is all in that realm. But it can all really be one. It's all really they're all connected. And it's us. It's who we are. It's it's all in here. 
Yes. Right? But we walk around thinking we're a brain and a hunk of meat. Yes. You know, bones and muscles, organs and a brain. But like we're so, so much more. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? I wanted to, I want to ask you some very mundane, practical questions. How long is the session with you? If somebody called you for a session, how is, does it run into a number of sessions? And, uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. And also, how can people contact you? Okay. Okay. The name of my practice is Ladybug Body Mind Healing. Um, and uh, it's ladybugbodymindhealing.com. And I offer um, body mind energy therapy sessions. And they're an hour. And, you know, they're sort of similar to therapy where some regular basis, I don't have, it doesn't have to be weekly, but some kind of regular basis. I see yes. people weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, just some ongoing sure. type of sure. situation um, that lets us you know, pull the thread through and yes. keep growing. Okay. So those are an hour. And then I do um, energy, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, emotion code sessions, which are a little shorter. I'm just starting to do the sessions, stand standalone sessions, because I'm Although I've been using it for five years, I'm just newly certified because I really wanted to make sure it worked. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and so I really kind of, I really vet things really well before I bring them on board. Yeah. So um, those are 50 minutes. Um, They can be shorter, but I really like to have the time. Yes. Because the more I talk with someone, the more I get to know them. And the more I know them, that's when my intuitive yeah, exactly. kick in. Yes. My, that's just how well, we work. Yes. You know, yeah. so I don't. Very important. So talking is important, but important. it's important because it's grist for the mill and then we take the deep dive. Exactly. That's, you know. Yes. Um, but I, so it, there are 50 minutes um, and those can be as needed. People can just come in and, you know, I'm having a hard time with this or that um, and come in and do a session. I also sell packages of three for each of, for either of those types. Um, but for the, the emotion code, it, it's, you know, beneficial because sometimes it does take more then one session to start feeling a difference. Um, uh, and I like to tell people with the emotion code sessions, you know, it may not be a big, uh, huge sh change. Like a, I always say change isn't a light switch. It's a dial. So even if we take you down, point, right? Very nice point, yes. yeah. Yeah, because people want a light switch. And there are times where it is, ooh, a light switch, but it might be a light switch in that it's shifting, like it's still there, but I'm, completely seeing in a different way now like now i can see other options or yes. it doesn't bother me as much or yes. you know or, or or it just seems smaller or something yeah so um so it can be just to you know for one session or three or it can be again ongoing but it doesn't have to be regular it's whenever you know you need it um and then the other sessions that i do that are also not sort of a regular uh, sessions are hypnotherapy so we maybe we're working together and there's a just a real stuck place, a belief or some trauma that happened. Yes. We might want to go back doing it with hypnotherapy or we could do it with the emotion code. It really, right. it really depends. Now that the emotion code that I'm using that, you know, we'll see how the hypnotherapy still plays out because that's a longer session. Those are two hours, up to two hours. So, mm -hmm. um, but you, you really, you get immersed yeah. in this. Yeah. Uh, we go back in time and you now have you know, the ability, you are allowed now to express those things. And when you do physically and verbally, it gets it out of your body. So we're back to the body, right? And that gets it out. And then healing the inner child. And we listen, then you get a recording of that. So like, you know, most hypnotherapy or hypnosis, the repetition. So you listen to that and it gets into the subconscious and it yes. starts to change, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's Akashic Record readings, yes. which I adore doing. And those are an hour and a half. And that is, you know, a little more existential questions, but it could be applied to everyday questions too. Sure. Right? But it gives you a chance to, we, we speak with the Lord's Masters, Teachers, and Loved Ones of the Akashic Records. Okay. And the records are our book of life. And most of us, you know, if, you, if you're religious at all, or if you're Jewish, like when we do Passover, or not Passover, um, Yom Kippur, yeah. Rosh Hashanah, it's about, you know, that, that, God is inscribing this past year in the book of life. And what would you like to make amends for? Is there something you'd like to change? Yes. Right. And so there, we get to go to the library where it is all held. And then the Lord's Masters, Teach, and Loved Ones give us whatever information they think we need that will help us right now. And it can answer all kinds of questions, you know, as to why and purpose, past lives, 
um, connecting with lost loved ones, um, just getting a, a deeper picture of who you are and a wider picture of who you are, yeah. and a greater connection to the person, who you really are, and to the divine realm. And so those are really also, I've had people say they're very, like, in a way, life-changing. They can be. I've had people say, you know, they got more out of that than they had out of 10 years of therapy because you just you just get answers there you can't get anywhere else. So it's really incredible. It's wonderful. What are some of the responses that people have had to your work? Mm. Yeah. That have been memorable for you? Yeah. Two or three that would Yeah, be. yeah. Well, that, you know... Uh, it, that where I've had, you know, one person say, yeah, I've gotten more out of that one session than I have out of, you know, in with that particular area they were talking about. Um, yeah. And other people, you know, similar things, uh, just just shedding light on areas they didn't know were there, sort of, um, you know, and and with the emotion code, uh, just the shift that people experience. And, you know, I do emotion code for pets, too, and I really wanted to do more because with pets, you can see it more clearly because there's nothing else in the way. So if you I've worked with pets and that night, the behavior is different. Yeah. It's just different. Yes. So the ease of it, people will talk about, you know, how how just easy it is to all of a sudden care less about something. Um, someone recently, you know, a young person who's even new to this and a little reluctant to do it, but yeah, she was like, all right, well, we'll try one, you know? Yeah. And we did. And she was really revved up about somebody. And the next day, and it's funny because sometimes when people do change, we're so funny, we move on to the next thing. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, well, now I'm the boss. Oh, but wait, what, about what happened with the other guy? Oh, yeah, no, I'm feeling better about that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, so all that, you know. Yeah. So so it it's right, and then there's the people who that might happen, but they might rationalize it. Well, yes. you know, it's a Tuesday, and on Tuesdays I usually, or you know, well, I wasn't feeling well, and now I am. You know, and that's fine. Sure. But it's the the shifts, and the other thing people say a lot of times is, I really feel heard, I really feel understood, and to me, I could cry just thinking about exactly that. because exactly. because also to me, even though there's a lot of techniques. And there's a lot of people out there who do techniques and just they come up, come, you do the technique and you go home. I really believe in relationship because relationship, even with therapy, and you'll, this is what you learn, uh, and Carl Jung is probably big with this and Rogerian, the, the heart and soul of good therapy and of change and healing is relationship. It is. It doesn't happen without it. And so that's one sort of reason why I, I am I'm very alternative. I was also a massage therapist before. Yes. So I come very much from that healing arts perspective and not the yes. licensed therapist perspective, which yes. is very, very, very different. Yes. And um and you know, and the relationship is fundamental because most of our, if not all, of our traumas and our history and our problems are interrelational. They're all, and that's an Adlerian thing. And Adler was a disciple of Freud. And yes. he's wonderful too. Yes. And it's all about relationship. And so my role then is to right, create that safe relationship where you are seen, you are heard, you are understood. Well, and and I I really, really love that. And 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 as you were talking about my the other day, you said you really have quite a history of how you got here. And so massage therapy was before this. And I was already starting to read bodies at that point. Yes. Someone would tell me, oh, it's my left shoulder. Yes. And okay. And all the reasons. And then I'd step out of the room and let them get ready. And I'd scan their body and I'd see little squiggly lines yes. in places that were not their left shoulder. And I'd come in and say, okay, so, you know, and then I'd start out just by putting my hands on and just preliminary. So yes. what's going on here in the right hip? Oh, yeah, that's nothing. I fell out of a tree when I was 10. Yeah. Okay, well, that has something to do, right, with, yes. with pain in your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. and, and now that I do emotional stuff, wow, now I'd really, you know, go at it with what emotion yeah. is trapped in there, what imbalance yeah. is trapped in there, what belief is trapped in there, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it just, and, and prior to being, right, prior to being uh, a massage therapist, I was a theater person, like yes. you. Yes. And so I have a lot of training as an actress or actor, I should yeah. say now, and <laughs> and 
that is somatic experiencing. When I'm talking about somatic therapy, it's somatic experiencing. When I took classes at NYU, right, yeah. we had to do sense memory, yeah. right? And you go to that place, you go to your room when you were five years old, and you really feel and imagine all your toys around you and all everything, and you just, you're really there, right? Yes. And then you start from yes. there, right? That's acting. Well, that's being present, and that's using our imagination, and that comes into the work I do now, too. Yeah. Which just sounds absolutely wonderful. It, yeah, it's wonderful. Such a creative process. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, you just remind me of what I did during COVID, because I would like to talk about COVID a bit as well. Okay. Um, on Tuesdays, Tuesday is my favorite day of the week. On Tuesdays, after the first year of COVID, I intentionally sat down in a particular chair to re-experience grief and sadness mm -hmm. intentionally so that I could cry because I had found I had gotten so strong mm -hmm. prior to COVID and during that crying was becoming almost impossible. And I, I love to cry. Mm -hmm. I love the spontaneous flow of emotion. Um, I feel that <clears throat> there are many illnesses in people that have to do with not crying, mm -hmm. suppressing and repressing grief, just simple sadness, feelings being hurt. You know, to me, I consider it all a very, a very beautiful experience, all of it. So for myself, I knew this isn't so good that you are so caught up in the, in the emergency of all of this, because it did change things radically. Mm -hmm. I found other people were not discussing it, which is part of some degree of trauma regarding it, mm. and also urgency, because there's too much. People can't make radical adjustments all of a sudden because there's a crisis. Yeah, yeah. Parents do that. I think if you've been a parent, you've done that. Yes. And then you kind of outgrow that, and then you learn that for your own self-preservation and health. Mm -hmm. And also to stick around long enough to remain a parent for as long as possible for your adult yeah. children. Yeah, yeah. You try to make sure that you develop new skills, new coping skills, as life requires it yeah. at different points in the maturation process. Yeah. On you, yeah. right? Yeah. So what worked at 20 won't work at 40. What worked at 40 will not work at 60 regarding an emergency. And one of the decisions I had made was I'm not going to meet this emergency by changing. Uh, I am not. I'm not going to put on more armor. Yeah, yeah. And this doesn't mean I've always done it or always done it to the point where it was totally self-destructive. That's really not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about I refuse to meet this crisis. Yeah. I am going to go through it authentically as who I really am. Yeah. I will not make certain concessions to it. Yeah. And I'm going to continue to embrace the wholeness of being the beauty of being a human being, yeah. and I will not give up crying because of this crisis, which has been involuntary mm -hmm. and has been imposed upon us mm -hmm. without even adequate explanation mm -hmm. nor preparation, and as far as I'm concerned, adequate outcomes addressing the outcome of it. Yeah. yeah. So what I did very simply was sat down for about a year in the same chair, hmm. and I thought and rethought anything that could give me that allowance to emote mm -hmm. and to feel and to grieve. Mm -hmm. Good. And it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what was really interesting in that experience was <clears throat> I could go back far to experiences, but I didn't necessarily have to. Mm -hmm. And I found that my body, speaking of the body, yeah, which is what we're here for, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the body, my body was saying, oh, we got the tears. Don't worry about us. We're good. You got plenty. <laughs> got plenty. No short. We got them. Yes. We don't have to go back too far yeah. to conjure up something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Especially yeah. in this world with war. Oh, my God. And racism. Yes. And so many, many things. So I could look at the current and feel the current. But what I noticed is the importance of solitude. Sometimes mm -hmm. meditation, there's a lot of changes in language 
words, their meaning. And I find like for myself that time, what was interesting and helpful for me was to no longer accept the term meditation <laughs> as having other people's meanings. Right? Yeah. Because lots of times we're encouraged to meditate in order to relieve ourselves of something that is physiological. Yeah. Like crying. Like meditate in this kind of esoteric astral realm. You know, get there as quickly as you can. <laughs> yeah. Leave your body behind. Yes. Just go with your astral body. Yes. Yes. You know. Yes. And it's very can be very helpful in and of itself. It can, and it also could be a little oh, denial wrapped up in a free package. A little denial. We're going to say, let's, of let's wrap this up. It's right. This is the United States of America. Yeah. This is capitalism. Yeah. We don't dwell. We don't linger. Yeah. The serious issues for long here. Yeah. I mean, if we did, yeah, there wouldn't be any white supremacy in the country anymore. Well, one thing, there yeah. wouldn't be physical illness for another. Apps. People wouldn't like, be dying of heart attacks because they wouldn't be grieving yeah. as so lonely, as so depressed, right. as so brokenhearted. That the heart can't take it and inside. Right. That's right. That's right. The kidney. Does that represent joy oh, change? The kidney has to do with flushing and reflushing and regenerating. Yes. Yes. But I wonder what you think about the kidney. I'm just yes. Curious. Well, you know, I, I, it's not my, yes, my, exactly. my forte of, of this. Exactly. You know, but I, and, and, but I know that, you know, those, those organs are in the lower half of our body, right? Which yeah. is, which is what, you know, if you think yeah. of chakra wise, root chakra, right? And yes. so when we come into the world, um, you know, if things aren't super stable what? or kind or comforting or secure, yes, we immediately then have imbalances yeah. in our root. And yeah. then the very next chakra, the sacral chakra, yes, is is really that that's sort of like the grand central station of organs. <laughs> and it's <laughs> right. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the bladder and the kidneys, right? And it's also so here you are with so your root chakra, not so happy because of, yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you're on the second floor, and now this is your place of desire, creativity, who I want to be in yeah. the world. Are you yes. kidding me with with that with what I've got going on in the root <laughs> right? And, <laughs> so, right? And then your organs do generate emotions. I mean, I have it in my my the emotion code is in it. I know I hate saying this; it always makes it sound so petty, but it's it's on an app. So that she can use it, but yeah, it's, it's extremely right. helpful. Yes, yeah. it's 2024. Exactly, that's exactly. This is my show. You can exactly, say I can say anything I want. So it's map. All right, I. <laughs> I know it's, it's wonderful. Map. I love it. But and it will and it and it can tell you which organs generate what emotions and the lower emotions, sure. like you were saying, grief, uh, yes. fear, yes. you know, worthlessness, unworthiness, shock. Yes. Those are all in that bottom area. So as far, and I know that the kidney, if you have a lot of, if you have, if it's hard for you, yes, to, to express yourself, yes, to, yes. to, to desire, um, yes. to, to be free to want what you want yes. in life, which yes. a lot of us, that's where it's going to get yes. caught up in there. And that's the kidneys are there. And then the, and the grief is in there. Right. Exactly. And, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Then, right. And then, and then the dividing line, the solar plexus. Right. And then yes. above that, and so from below, it's the Earth, Mother Earth energy and connection to Earth. And yes. Earth, and I belong here. Yes. And then the uh, the higher three or says four are connected to heaven. So we really are truly like a tree. Yes, right? we are. Yeah. And but you were talking about the you know grieving and grieving very much as liver right I, yes yeah and so all the diseases and I'm sure if we looked the the diseases that predominate in this country in particular heart is really a big one yes very right sure yeah and you were talking about you know racism and yes and I brought oh, yes. denial and yes you know it's the it's the reason why we're here yes. why we're here yes is and I always say this you know and it's something about this country. We cannot look at our stuff, feel it, reflect, accept, and change it. Except we we just we won't. We just won't. Um, and I and it's very sad. And yes, and and so it doesn't ever change, because if you don't look at it, feel it, you got to feel it, and the feeling it is what white people don't want to do. Yeah, you know, um, because then they'd have to admit that yeah this country is built on racism. I do feel that, no, I don't feel, I think, I think that the pandemic has drawn parallels to white people. Amen. Amen. Now, they're more sensitized to black culture and black cultural suffering. 
-hmm. and the suffering imposed upon them because of white privilege. Mm -hmm. And that when they hear, let's say, if another culture is envious, let's say, of white culture, they're not envious. They don't want to be white. They want civil rights. Yeah, yes. Yeah. They want the civil rights that white people have. Yes. They want yeah. privilege. Yes. So right. it's not about, oh, I want to be white. Yes. It's not at all. And yeah. yet the egocentricity of mass consciousness regarding whiteness yeah. in this culture, but all over the world, yeah, is such that the interpretation to others is, well, they want to be like me. Yeah. Well, they can't be like me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just kind of, and this is, we're talking about one part of the population here. We're not talking about every single person. Right. I understand. So, um, but on the other hand, what people want is equality. Yep. They want yeah. to not be murdered in their cars. Yep. That's what they Right. I, I mean, you know, that's what, and there's so much in this conversation could go there, but I'm going to try to keep it focused on you and your particular gift. Okay. And, and I know that fundamentally you are an activist. And as far as you know, a normal person regarding human relations, yes, you're not, you know. So um, one of the one of the words that you used a little few minutes ago was freedom. You mentioned freedom, and I think that one of the a lot of our a lot of the country's drive is capitalistic. It's about money. I mean, obviously. So, what I have found in people with their relationship needs that. And again, this has to do with one subconscious. It has to do with family of origin. It also has to do with cultural norms. Yeah. We're distinctly different from one another regarding our norms. Yeah. We would have to be in a country that promotes genocide. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so we're trying to distinguish ourselves within this climate of some kind of human global certainty that we can experience freedom. Still, mm -hmm. which is being challenged now. Uh, yeah. And it's been challenged for many. And, yeah. you know, cage families and then discuss freedom. I mean, you have to be insane in order to do that. And we have a lot of people who are out of their minds now, right now, yes. trying to run things. Yes. So I just want to add that that will be temporary. It's going to change by March or April. Okay. So people who are about to destroy themselves over this stuff, try to hang in there mm -hmm. until April. Okay. Try. Try. It won't be easy. You know, sit in that chair, cry your eyes out every Tuesday, do whatever you got to do. Wow. But it's going to be different by April. And there are many, many political surprises coming up. Mm -hmm. And they are worth waiting for. They are worth getting through this for. Mm -hmm. So keep up what you're doing. And again, I want to thank you for what you're doing. I mean it. And I'm having guests on whom I deeply, deeply appreciate and respect what they are doing. And to be doing such things in this climate. Yeah. It takes tremendous courage. Yeah. It takes tremendous discipline. Inspiration, obviously inspiration. And really to be a catalyst for healing in a world that is and in a community that's aching. Yeah. Is a wonderful thing to do. And that is that is really important. That is to me the essence of transformation. Yeah. Not only for others, but for ourselves. Absolutely. For ourselves. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we know how we got there. Yes. We did it through suffering. Yes. And we didn't, we didn't, yes. and it's not about suffering over your suffering. It's not about being more of a victim than the next person. And it's not about, um, you know, um, being heroic in any way, mm -hmm. but it does take tremendous courage mm -hmm. to refuse to suffer over your suffering to remain open and receptive to spirit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Without judging it. Because, and as you've mentioned in the show, that's been a very, very important aspect of your development. Very. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could easily say you wouldn't be here doing this right now without that. No. And the courage it takes to listen to spirit. Because when you listen to your intuition, and as you mentioned, angels come through and people come through. But... Uh, Many times, without your permission, they can't do anything because you have free will. Is it, is it? Yes. And if you're not exercising your free will, they won't come in and impose themselves on you. Very rarely will they do that. Right. So you can have people who have crossed over, who have loved you deeply, who are very aware of you. No, no. And they be going to themselves, 
what did he do that for? Mm. <laughs> How can he do that? You know, he, he's supposed to have done that. So in a way, on the other side, family members and friends are are on the same level of relationship is going on. Mm. You're like, what on earth? Yeah. And here I did. I, I advised them to make a left, not a right. Yeah. You know, I told yeah. them, don't take that money out of your bank account yeah. just yet. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you get these little cl clues, and they're physical. For me, they're physical. You yeah. mentioned the physicality. Yes, right? yes. For me, it's also physical. If I start out the day and I think I know what I'm going to do, so I have my plan, and then I have the have tos, yeah. and then I have what I think I'm going to do, and then I go outside, and I'm like, that's so interesting because I know how to pay attention to spirit, yeah. and I know the spirit is going. Oh no, you're not, you're not going there. Yeah. Not today. You're going over here, and then I'll go over there. And then I meet something or something incredible Absolutely. will happen and something yep. so beautiful. It defies logic. And what they do is they keep coming in and accelerating the value of their communication with you. Mm -hmm. That's what I have found. Mm -hmm. this, the value of their communication. Their communication. What that means. Yeah. Meaning that intuitively, if you get a feeling in your body, mm -hmm. and I relate very well to what you're saying about the physical body, mm -hmm. first of all. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting a certain feeling or a certain sensation, mm -hmm. then it is validation. It can be validation from spirit mm -hmm. that you're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. If you're changing your life in some particular way and you're feeling a lot of no's, I can't do that for this reason or that reason. And we haven't even gotten into belief systems yet. That'll be fun mm -hmm. to tap in on for a few minutes. Okay. So then you're going, well, I can't because of this. I can't because of that. And then all of a sudden... You might get a phone call, which resonates. It gives you a sensation. Yeah. And that phone call is going to be that very thing yeah. that's going to make you go, well, it's not like that anymore. That's not what's going to happen if I do this. Wow. The, that right. wow moment. Right. They right. used to be called years ago the ha-ha moment. Oh, yeah. We call those the aha moment. Oh, yeah, moment. definitely. So um, where, wow, well, I, I have asked for growth. Yeah. I've worked for growth. Yeah. I've prayed for growth. Yeah. I've hoped for growth. And guess what happened? Wow. I grew. Exactly. I grew. Yeah. The belief system I had yesterday yeah. is gone. Yeah. That's yeah. no longer my belief system. Yeah. Why? Because I received evidence. Yeah. Constant evidence. Yes. Yes. That the new idea, and again, we the subconscious. Right. The subconscious, for me, my experience has been the subconscious comes in. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's already there. Yeah. But, but, but it comes in in a way you have to pay more attention, but, yes. precisely. So I'll pay attention to my subconscious. And it's almost like, not quite a silent partner, but in a sense, it's a partnership. Yeah. So it's a very real partnership. And then uh, certain situations, I'll look back and go, okay. oh, this is what I was trained, let's say, to be afraid of. I was trained to be afraid of this. Right, right. Even if it's a new belief. Oh, no, I was trained to be afraid. I can't believe in that. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Right? Yes. And then all of a sudden you're learning, I think I might have to consider this or reconsider that belief. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it's almost like putting on a new a new shirt or something. Yeah. So, well, how does it fit? Oh, it's kind of fits more comfortably than the old belief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um and also just for myself in certain aspects of accidents or you know, I like like I broke my wrist. Uh huh. Well, I figured, well, I had a hard time handling emotions because I consider the left side emotion. Okay. The heart's there. I happen to consider it that way. Okay. It's also receiving and... And, and it's receiving. Yeah. So I was having a hard time mm. with accepting what I was not receiving. Mm. I wasn't receiving. But what I was receiving was knowing in advance I wasn't going to be receiving mm. from that source. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Right? Uh -huh. Yes. So, but you're not going to get what you want to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then going, oh, no, no, but I have to. I have to work okay. this harder. Uh huh. And then my wrist is going, no, no, the game is over. Right. You don't, you don't manipulate consciousness. You don't manipulate life's principles. Mm -hmm. um, and for myself, because a lot of my issue has been about racism, you don't manipulate white supremacy. It doesn't work. It's never going to work. They got they got it over on you. Mm -hmm. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're used to manipulating others, and mm -hmm. you can't manipulate in return. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work right? Because of our spiritual direction or our subconscious. Mm -hmm. That's not how you're going to work it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't have to. Anyway, but also I didn't have to. Yeah. But um, with the wrist, somebody said to me, oh, you have to go to the doctor. You have to go and get it, the cast on. And I said, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't. 
And they say, oh, but then you're going to end up have getting arthritis. Yeah. Well, this happened 10 years. No, I haven't. I'm not going to get arthritis. Mm-hmm. And lots of times, and it healed. Yeah. And lots of times, and I tend to heal in three weeks from wow. things. Not, okay. not everything, but yeah, I'd say a substantial amount of things. So, um, but my prayer for myself is, um, thank you, God, for all that is, for lessons learned, and for my being pain-free. Mm-hmm. And, and I never experienced pain when anything's happened to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's literally no pain. Okay. And things have, and I don't experience pain. I just want to share that wow. as we're talking okay. holistically of the body and the spirit. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I've said that for about 25 years, at least three or four times a day. Thank you, God, for all that is lessons learned and for my being pain free. And it also involves emotion. So if I'm in something that is kind of being stuck into something, okay. Um, I don't believe in pain. I don't believe in having to experience pain. I don't. So I don't believe it. And people have known me. I'll just unbelievable. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, and if I do have a sensation of pain, it lasts about three minutes and it goes away because there's something about threes for me. Okay, three. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, so, um, but uh, about freedom. Yeah. I think people don't want intimacy. They want freedom. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Right. Right. Okay. I, I- Right. Well, isn't that interesting, though? Okay. Um, intimacy. Because people talk about it a lot. I mean, we're obsessed with partnership. Almost True. Ill, Sasha. True. We gravitate toward each other. Of course, we're here to do that. But then as I'm talking about the subconscious as yeah, well. Yeah, right. Uh, right. Well, yeah. I mean, there's almost like a, hmm. Well, it's like that's that age-old question, you know, we are all one, but we're separate. Exactly. And and yes, you know, and I think that that sovereignty, yes, that, you know, yes. We, yes. we we have that, and and the freedom is in the sovereignty in a way. Yes, it's it just is. right, it like it into is. growing, you know, your own sense of freedom, and it's it a real is. eternal thing. It is. But it's funny you bring up the word um, intimacy because this morning, walking my dog, I do some really deep thinking when I'm walking my dog, oh, and I yes. do my mantras, and I do my healing and I do all kinds of yes things. I'm a lot of other things too, purging and that. Yes, exactly. Uh, right. I just sure. love my walks. And um so I have a client who's you know, whose cat is not doing well and is probably gonna die. And 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 then and it's funny because right now I I know several people in that position situation. Yeah. I don't know what's happening, but right now something's sure going on. Sure. And and you know, people will say, well like, you know, I'm crying all the time and you know, it's just a cat and I feel so bad. But you know what? And then I was thinking about that. Because I was thinking of unconditional love and how so many of us were not raised. You're yeah. really lucky to have been raised with unconditional love or even just feeling loved. Of course. Feeling loved. Right. True. Right. Yeah. So when we have a pet, there it is. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it may be the only time that you feel that's unconditional so true. love. That's absolutely Right? And they're always there and they love you no matter what. They give you everything you might not have gotten. Sure. So therefore, it is probably your most intimate relationship in a way. True. You can be your total self. Yes. You can rely on the cat or mouse or totally. dog or yeah. whatever it is, yeah. or rat, right? And so, yeah. of course, you're going to feel it deeply. Oh, my God. Almost more yes. than a person sometimes. Yes. And especially if, you know, if you've struggled with intimacy with people or your family was, you know, not yeah. that way. Right. Um. So, um. yeah, in fact, I walking my dog, I'll talk to people and, and a man got very chatty and how much you know, we're talking about how much we love our dogs and he's like yeah god i love this dog and he really saved me during covid and everything yeah, like that yeah, yeah and he yeah. said that i've had to be honest with my my wife you know if we were on a boat and <laughs> they both <laughs> fell out oh, that's great. i'd be getting the dog oh, so, oh, just so, you know and we both laughed. Have, and I, I, we have a feminist issue there for another <laughs> show for sure oh, oh okay oh, absolutely so that maybe is, oh, yeah. but but you know i just that that is how much and yeah. and why is that right because here we yeah. have the safest love we could ever have oh sure and sort of cry just thinking about it yes. you know so 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 in that way that intimacy but it it's the kind of intimacy that doesn't ask a lot of you it asks only what you want to give you know what i'm saying sure. like but with people, right, that and most yes. of the time too, here we go back to, you know, the um interpersonal relationship being the root of most of our issues. Sure. And if that's yes, true, then does. we get into it. Yes, it and does. then what happens to us? And maybe we don't have boundaries and and we or we lose ourselves too much or whatever. So it it really is it's hard to navigate 
that. Yeah, so in, in terms of your work, yeah. maybe we're not that conscious of our subconscious. We certainly are And, and yeah. therefore, we're not relating yeah. adequately anyway. Yeah. Not not as criticism, like we're, we're making a big mistake. A right. lot it has nothing to do with self-criticism. But it's true that if we're going to take the subconscious very seriously, there, there is some way in which we need to have that be understood yeah. by our closer people in our lives. True. And that would yeah. us take theirs seriously, too. Yes. And I think people have natural cutoff points regarding their subconscious. Yes. They don't, they don't want you to know what happened when they were four. Yes. That's a lot of still people be very freaking them out. That's right. Protective. And especially protective of families. Mm -hmm. and what you might think of their family mm -hmm. dynamic, mm -hmm. yeah. especially if they're trying to get, get, leave a favorable impression upon you, whether it's a work relationship, a teacher, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not all designated toward the most intimate relationships, mm -hmm. but everybody, because if people are not conscious that they have something else at work that's impacting their, right. their skills or interfering in them or that's helping them develop the skills right. or interfering in that process you blame yourself just, and and yeah, right exactly and that and that's the beauty it's such the beauty like what you just said because right we could want something with all our heart yeah. and then we'll go ahead and test we'll tune in yes. yeah. and we'll ask your subconscious mind how worse you know you want to be 100 yes. on board and we'll test it yeah. and people yeah i'll say is she 100 percent? no is she more is she more than 50 percent or less right. and people are like really i'm only 45 i really want this i've been working at it for years wow okay yes. and then beautiful point that's beautiful exactly point. Why it because then that gets back to the blocks that's right well then why are you allowing this block to continue that's right that's that right. means you have to start to allow the imprint of that block to dissolve somehow. That's right. And then and you walk with these feelings. And that's it. Or that. Exactly. So so a somatic approach to that yeah. would be to to bring up whatever it is I want, even just me saying that. So what happens to you when I say, when you hear me say you're only 45%, what do you yeah. notice in your body? I'm just, my my chest is clutching or my stomach yeah. is churning yeah. or, or all of a sudden, you know, or it's in my jaw. And so then we'll just kind of go there. So notice that. What else are you noticing about your jaw? Yeah. Is there a, you know, you're seeing... Or I might say, okay, go ahead and, and touch your jaw. Or I might come over and do something, right? Because now we're at the truth of it. And that True. is the subconscious True. right yeah. there. And kind of, you know, it, it's it's bringing you to that. And yes. then the other way, right, is the emotion code where we then will test, are there trapped emotions right. that are interfering with uh, her being 100% on board with becoming a whatever it is, with your dreams, hopes and dreams. Then yeah. we remove yeah, yeah. some trapped emotions. Yeah, see, see. Then there may be a belief. There may be other things. And so, because, right, it's about getting it out of the way. And a few minutes ago, you were talking about your ability to to kind of notice that subconscious or to notice yes. something and or the belief. And you're like, yeah, why am I believing this? I don't want that. And that's yes. beautiful. Yes. You, though, you have, you're in a different realm a little bit than other people. <laughs> I mean, more than a little bit. You, you, you are, right? You are. Okay, yeah. You are. And so, for whatever reason, whether it's your own work, right? Or you kind of came in a little bit, came in like that, a little bit of, you became yeah, this, yeah. a little bit of, of work, a little bit. So you can do that. Most people, even if they notice yes. in that moment, yes, there's a fear that stops them from believing it. I want to believe yes. that I am successful, that I'm beautiful, that I'm lovable, that I'm enough, because those are the core. Those core they things. are. Oh, they are. And Absolutely. they want to, they and they might act like it, but yes. they really not. Yes. And that's when, okay, let's start moving things. Let's start working on that. What comes up? What do you notice? Is there a moment in time, somatically, is there a moment? Yes, you know, that's that's coming up for you right now as you're thinking. Is there a person, you know, she might, they might be talking about the childhood. Okay, what age is coming up for you right now? Sure. It feels around seven. And what's happening? You're, well, you know what? There was, I don't know if it matters. Okay, no, well, yeah, it's yeah, this is a birthday party I went to. You know, I don't know. It's not a big yeah. deal. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> you know, birthday party I went to, and another one was playing, yeah. and I was like, about, right? And so, so just noticing that, right? And so being with that Truly. part of you. So that or emotion code, we simply go after the emotions. And as they come up, yeah. there's a moment we need to know, okay, you were five and this is um, this is abandonment, right? We come up with abandonment. And so you were five years old. It was your mother. What are you noticing? And it was something about, a, you know, oh, it was, it was the springtime because I see flowers. So, you know, oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. It could be, but probably not. Yeah, that time, that springtime where I da 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 and everyone went but me. I, okay, right there. 
So, and then we clear it. And the way we clear an emotion code is we just swipe our governing vessel. The governing vessel is the meridian that goes from the uh, top of your lip over your head and down to your, your tailbone. So true. And, and it governs all the other hi highways of, of, um, of energy. And, and it has access to every part of your body, right? So you swipe it three times. Originally, Dr. Nelson was using a magnet, but he's like, now, like, we are magnetized. We don't we are, mag we are. You know, we are. So you swipe three times. Three. And then because I'm clairsentient and feel everything, yeah. when I clear, I feel it. I feel tingles. I feel a weight come off. People mostly do. It sometimes don't, but it doesn't matter. So those these techniques that I offer people and the stuff that I do is for those of us who can't quite do what you just oh, described, I right? Exactly. Yes, yes. We know that's how I yes. should be, but I can't. Why can't I believe that? And it could take years. It could take a lifetime sometimes with those real core, am I worthy? Am I, you know, those core, core beliefs about ourselves. Yes. But, you know, again, it's a dial. So if your life's changing and things are getting better, well, there you go. Yes. You know, yes. and that's where you are. And yes. you are keep moving forward. It's, yes. it's not like I want to be fixed and perfect, right? People come in sometimes yes. like it's their car and they want you to you know, just cut this off and fix it. But And I'd say, don't need the car. Yeah. You don't need the car. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. But um, it's interesting about the Meridian, I have to say, because I just had a dream about somebody I know recently, and they were standing in the corner, and they were all cells, just the cells of them. Wait, did you see this? Or you had a dream? It was a dream. dream. Okay. So, um, but the this area of her head yeah. was as if it had been, it hadn't been shaved off, but it was similar as if it was shaved off. Like the way you just explained the meridian. So cool. And this person's extreme, extremely spirit, yeah. is spiritual, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. but also has multiple serious issues and problems that are regarding belief systems. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I'm just sharing that with you because I've just never, I didn't even know how to explain this. And now I yeah. uh, say, oh, it's the meridian. It's the governing <laughs> vessel. And the it governing vessel. governs. It's also, as you're talking about it, and with her being so intuitive, when I do matrix energetics, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll sew up torns and uh, tears and, and leaks in your aura. Oh, we'll uh, fix the sacred grid. We can connect to your parallel universe. We can connect yeah. to your, we can do soul retrieval. We could do um, also opening up your third eye and that yeah. this governing, it also represents. So the third eye, yeah. of course here, but it's like a, um, a film projector. Yeah. And it starts back here at your occiput. So when we clear it out, we are actually clearing out this, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it, you do. So we take a crystal yes. and clear that so that you can, so the light can come through and come out your third eye. And then you can, it, you know, you can illuminate what you want to say. That's fascinating. I mean, yeah. Uh, that's really fascinating to me. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm curious about the right eye. What does that mean to you? Do you have any opinions about the right eye? Not, not specifically, although, you know, NLP, I don't know if you know, Neuro Linguistic Programming, they do, and I'd love to learn that. I mean, if, you know, mm -hmm. you mentioned something like three-year plan, that's like... Oh, yes, right. we'll go to that. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, and, and all healers have this. Yeah. We're like kids at a candy store, we can't wait to learn the next, you know. Yeah. But NLP is does so much work. So I just, you notice how I'm looking up one yeah. way or the other? Yes. And in NLP, you learn what that means. Oh, okay. No matter where you look. And and so if you look up to the right, it means something. If you look to the left, it means something. If you look down, it means something. Um, eyes also are part of the, the body code, which I do the body code. I'm not certified yet. I'll be certified in, in January, in um, <laughs> next year. But, <laughs> but that gets into the body and it gets into and to eyes, which is part of the central nervous system. Um, and eyes are very interesting. But all I know is, uh, you know, right. And of course, everything crosses over. Yes. Right. Yes. But, um, you know, but right is the is the male energy, is the doing, the giving, putting out into yes. the world. Yeah. And and left is yes. the female yeah. receiving energy. Yeah. So maybe our right eyes get more stressed. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it's doing the work. It's more masculine. It's more. Yeah. Do, 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 go, go, go. And isn't it amazing how much we have to use them with texting and everything? Yes. I mean, it's just yeah. really changing us. It's just changing us genetically. Oh, my gosh. Changing our brains. With so many. Yeah, and, and you think about the younger generation, the Zoomers, 
And I just often say their brains are just different than ours. They're going to be, they are, right? They're going to have to be. They are. I mean, they, just, can, live. they can never stay in their bodies without that change. Right. Never. Right. But um, the other night I had a experience in my right eye because that's one of my psychic areas. Mm -hmm. okay. There was another um, medium. She was Irish, Eileen Garrett, 50s and 40s. Interment. And she used to get visual stuff through her knee. Oh, my goodness. So I'm just sharing this with those people who may be mediumistic out there. Yeah. And not have certain knowledge of the many amazing ways in which you get images and parts of your body get images. But anyway, um, hey. so in this experience, it was two nights ago, and there was, and the, and the experience is in my eye. It's like a movie in my eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was a city. And a UFO spaceship was hovering just above the city. And then I read in the, saw in the news the next day, I think that happened in Oregon mm. the day after. Okay. Yeah. So I just have to share that because it's so vivid. And I'm fascinated with body parts. I'm yes. actually fascinated. Yeah. Uh, because this particular gift in this eye, none of my particular gifts uh, which people can see on my website, spiritphotography.org, but none of my gifts were anticipated. Mm -hmm. I didn't sit down and go, and I'm curious about this with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is good. Because I like the beginnings of things. I think the beginnings yeah. of things are fascinating to me. Fascinating. So with that experience, I didn't sit down and write What's the most bizarre experiences I could have, possibly have with my physical body psychically? Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, as my gift increased, it increased in those particular areas and then had a certain accent and a certain kind of predictability about what will come through, right. how it may come through. Now, what about you with your spirituality? Yeah. What do you think is one of the key aspects of your spirituality? That did transform your life at any particular time in your life. Okay. So those transformative, those moments. Yes. That's, okay. The be, okay. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, well, I, and it's funny, you know, because now I'm looking back so much more on that. Like, how did I even get here? You know, <laughs> <laughs> because, and because this part, you know, I didn't learn, you know, yes. it, it's like, really, how did I end up here? <laughs> because I, I didn't grow up in a fit. And right, you know, and and I always say, you know, artists and healers, we're we're we're, we're the same, you know, yeah. artists, the arts, and you know, and and healing. But yes, and yeah. you know, starting out, it's so in the arts, right? Yeah. Starting out in the arts, and um, as a teenager, I went to the Southwest with my my family, and I fell in love with it. So there was something a Native American. So that was like, and I'm getting tingles now. So any, yeah. it's just like so so the Native American. Way yes. I yes. just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the landscape. I fell in love with it all. Yes, didn't didn't do much though with it. I just loved it, you know. And then a few years later, in college or after college, I was in a children's theater company, mm -hmm. and the woman who ran it, um, uh, she's the first person I met who was very woo woo. And I'm just using that. Yes, word, but, yes, okay. Um, and uh, you know, she was into crystals and into yes. uh, healing, and I. And her husband actually was a psychologist. This is, uh, you know, in New yeah. York City, Upper West Side. Sure. Her, her husband was, I think, a somewhat famous um, psychologist, yeah. uh, Robbins. Their last name is Robbins. But, um, and she, before rehearsal, would, would she was the first one to teach me about grounding, right? Yeah. About, um, you know, putting your roots down and breathing and all, because we, we did that as a warm up. And if any of us weren't feeling well, she would take out her crystal and use it as a pendulum. And just do some healing on us. And that, and she gave us all, like for Christmas one year or something, she gave us all that she made, a crystal on a chain, which I have to this day. And I cherish it. And if there's like one thing I cherish, that's like, I cherish that so much. Yeah. Um, so that started again, brought me a little more, but still not, you know, that's really yeah. there. Yeah. And we were talking about parenting before we, you know, we yeah. met. And so what really got me there was my son started having seizures yes. at four and I then learned, so I, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And there was no, and it's a whole other, whole other show just to talk about, sure. about it, but sure. But I, I, yeah. So I think, I think the way I did it was I started, I took Reiki. I thought I need to be able to do something with him. So I, 
I took a few levels of, of Reiki and I did, would do Reiki. And then when, when he stabilized because of homeopathy, yes. homeopathy uh, stopped them and they were awful. They were four different kinds. There were five to eight times a day. He was completely like his head was you know, just yeah. chopped liver at that point. He was a lot of catching up to do and he still has a lot of, you know, issues. Yes. But, um, uh, but he was stable enough for me to finally come up for air and go, okay. And I had learned by then about all the different alternative healings. So that's yes, how I got so it. So, so I learned for myself, for him, uh, homeopathy uh, and different things and herbs and stuff. But I knew the way my brain works and the who I am. Yes. Homeopathy wasn't going to be my thing. It's too booky. It's too yep. greedy. It's too, yes. too detailed. Yes. I needed something that's more body oriented, that was more flowing, more improvisational, yes. more yes. interactive. So I went and to massage, massage school. Yes. And I fell in love with it. And of all, in my life, some I don't always feel like I belong. I, I hardly ever do feel like where I, I belong someplace. Sure. Um, but massage school, I did 100% with the people, mm -hmm. the experience, loved it and had a wonderful you know practice for 13 years. And I was often told, you know, you really should do energy work because people, healers would tell me that you really need to do more energy. Yeah. But I thought, well, I got to keep. I need it to. I need them to to feel the pain, and I need to get rid of it, and that's the end. I don't. If I do energy, they're going to think yeah. I'm not doing anything. So I was very reluctant to do yes. it for yeah. years. Yeah. Right? I understand? It yeah, totally. really. So little, right? And so then, um, I hurt my back to the point where I had. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do massage anymore because it was a very complicated thing, and I'm still not a hundred percent. Um, and so that's when I went into decided I wanted to do mind body therapy. So, and then that took me into a whole other thing. So, so it just kept sort of building and building and building and um, got the foundation by getting my master's in social work. I thought I was going to go sort of the mainstream route, but I realized very quickly, I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I had to end up going my route. That's just the way I do things. Yes, so exactly. I just couldn't. And it wasn't authentic and I don't really like it. So, um, but then I got cancer and- and it was really sort of a direct, it, it was that I was not aligned with a lot of the people I was with, the way things were being taught. I was just really unhappy, yeah. really unhappy, but sort of lost, sort of feel like I had to and not having enough confidence to just stand and just say, this is what I do. Sure. You know? So I had to build towards that. And during that time when I had cancer, this is the, this is the reason why my, from the name of my practice, which is Ladybug Body, Mind, Healing, going through a lot. Uh, I was lost. I had graduated, but I still was really unsure of things. I knew what I wanted to do, but I'm like, how am I going to get there? Just feeling crappy. And it was yeah. a lot of things. And I was yeah. getting a lot of downloads because that was before the pandemic. Yeah. And I don't know if you were getting yeah, downloads. I did. Oh, yes. I got a ton. I did. I was very depressed. Visual. Yes. yes. Very, de very depressed. Mm -hmm. I was crying almost every day. And I kept getting downloads of yes. everything we're seeing now, rubble, yes. um, a waterfall where we just fell off of it. And then yeah. when, and it said 2020 across it. Yeah. And so I knew something was coming. Yeah. And, this, and again, yeah. this is all was new. I wasn't doing predictions before. I just, yes, but I yes. knew it. And I didn't even know that I knew it. So there are always yeah. bugs on the ceiling in the house, right? Or often there are. And they usually just stay up there. Yes. But they came down every yeah. single day. They'd Aww. come down and cover my nightstand. Yeah. So that they were like all over everything. And I knew that they were there for me. They yeah, was exactly. Because I was, was I had television boards up and I was trying to figure things out and heal myself. Right. Which and is, so they were there for me. me. Yeah. Right. And so that I thought, okay, that's the name of my practice, Ladybug Bonnie Night <laughs> Gimli. That's it. It has to be Ladybug. So, you know, so that's, and so, and then from there, this whole, these, now I can decipher the truth is a, is sort of a shiver, a tingle. And, but when it's spirit yes. or an entity yes. or anything, it's like, I get like an icebox, like a freezer. I just, you, okay. I just get cold everywhere. Or if it's the absolute truth, I just get absolutely like it just takes over my body it's incredible or if a lost loved one comes in during a session yeah, yeah. it's like oh they're here and i'm like oh my god <laughs> so so i so i don't you know so that's it and then i'll get words or images yes. or more you also synchronicity i don't know if you have yes things, of course, of course. Of course. sure and it's also part of the um 
it's part of the healing manifestations when there's a healing going on. I feel synchronicity is one of the things that are most evident. Okay. Uh, it means you're on the right track, I mean, sort of. Yes, and that it's obvious yes. as a person. Yes. There's, a, and a, there's an energy. I don't know what else to call it, okay. but a healing energy. Okay. Where it defies logic. There's no reason for it. It just simply is. And it's more important than what appeared to be. Okay. It's more important. Wait, what, what is more important than, yeah. The synchronicity. Okay. The fact of it. Okay. And that it is spiritual. Okay. And spirituality is manifestation. Right. Spir right. Spirituality is not a non-physical and non-active presence. It's not. For me, it's not. Yeah. I will say for me. Okay. So um, it's a physical presence. Right. Um, the alchemy is what causes the physical healing. Okay. To me. Okay. Yeah. So the essence synchronicity. Spirit, the, yeah. And essence of spirit. Becomes more evident. Mm -hmm. The energy. And the energy is alchemy between me and the person who might be getting healed. Okay. Do you say me? The chemistry of the alchemy. Okay. Is the healing ingredient. It's the healing agent. Okay. At least for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And and I guess, again, it's a little bit of like what you, again, was saying before, we can be represented yes. with things. Yes. And we can see them and notice them, but there's also a difference in letting them in. Exactly. I, in those moments. And I think that's sort of what you're, you know. You're exactly right. Right. That's exactly what I do. I acknowledge. Yes. You're present. Okay. Yes. It's no longer just me and whatever all that is. Another show when you talk about ego, blah, 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 yeah. developmental changes. Yeah. But yes, I give that credence. But in a way, I have to because my photography mm -hmm. has done that. And that's, mm. but I did involve, before the photography, I did several healings with people regarding their hearts. So they all named and they all, whatever. Um, so, uh, but I feel like, <clears throat> I feel one of the changes, and we will close this um, show shortly, but I feel like, one of the changes was giving real respect to the invisible, the so-called invisible. The more respect I gave to it, the more visible it became to me. I did not ask for it to become more visible. Okay. Not at all. Yes, yes. But I think that the reverence that I have had for it and respect for it yeah. um, has become number one for me a lot in my life. It hasn't been about the physical and physical relationship. It hasn't been about other kinds of things. And if I feel something has to do with the higher octave, I call it. Yeah. Not my will, but divine will. Yeah. Then I don't interfere. Yeah. I don't interfere in other people's lives. I don't interfere in my own. Mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, this is, this is divinity at work. Okay. Divinity is real. Yeah. And, and it it's a real relationship that I have to it. I think I can liken it somewhat to my respect for my subconscious uh -huh. because I know everything has been stored there. Right. Some of it I came in intentionally for storage space for things that I brought from other lives. Absolutely. It comes up with the emotion code. And Preconception, trapped emotion. Exactly. And then zero to four years yeah. old. I like I knew my parents by the time I was two years old. I didn't have to know them anymore. I knew that by the time I was two. Yeah. But then another thing is with that aspect, um, <clears throat> I think we all do come from other galaxies and other stars. Yeah. And we come in with that memory, but it's been suppressed because it wouldn't feed capitalism. It doesn't feed capitalism. Yeah. That capitalism is too afraid of the so-called unknown. Yeah. So, but anyway... I remember as a two-year-old talking to my father and looking at our feet and thinking, I wonder why we have feet this time. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting because Look. all the spirits, all the people who died who came to me, who walk with me, they don't have feet because they don't need them because they float. Everything is like currency or vibration, which which also affirms your work because you're dealing with a lot of yeah currents and you're dealing with a lot of vibration. Yes. So, um, and then another time we spoke when I was about three years old and I remember thinking, this is so silly. We don't even need to speak. This is so silly. Because yeah. we already know. Yeah. We're all telepathic. We all come in psychic first. Mm -hmm. And then we learn whatever the culture or whatever yes. is is determined to yes. teach us. Yes. And then that's okay. That can be a part of karma. That can be a part of a blessing. It could be something you longed for on the yes. other side. Oh, I really want this experience, you know? Right. And um, 
And you need it. And your soul needs it. That's why we're here. Exactly. exactly. We signed up for it. We volunteered for this. If precisely, we volunteered. Yeah. And I think that's another really fascinating part of all of it. But with COVID, before COVID hit, my brother came in and said, this is going to be really, really hard. Remember you told me that when we said, get ready. This is going to be really yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt it was going to be about another family member dying, something like that. That kind of hard. Yeah. But, <clears throat> and, excuse me. So, um, but that's not what he meant. And he said, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be the hardest thing ever. So, and I've had a hard life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. We most, all of us have had a hard life. I mean, why come here and not do it that way? You learn the most from that experience until you're no longer willing to learn it anymore. Okay. So anyway, okay. right? Because yeah. of a change of belief and a change in yes. relationship to your subconscious and your subconscious coming in, going, guess what? There's been a change here. You know, but um, what I had done was taken a picture that snowed, and I took a picture of the, there was a clearing of the snow in front of the door. <laughs> and I happened, and I always get an intuition to take a picture where spirits coming out and they're saying, take a picture. You, you know, we're trying to come here physically to show you we're here. Right. People have to utilize us. You must utilize our gifts. That's what we're here for. Right. We need a relationship, mm -hmm. but we can't impose it on you. Yeah. We can't impose it on you. You have free will. Yeah. So, and I think that, but anyway, when I took the picture, there was my brother's face and my children's father right next to him. And my brother was looking like this, like, this is going to be tough, really tough. I saw that photo. Uh -huh. It's actually on my website. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, the GIFs. I think they're called GIFs or G-I-F-S. Yes. Yeah, yeah, GIFs. On the yeah. Yeah. I know how to pronounce that word. I've never known. I'm going with GIFs. Uh <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so very briefly, um, that was my visual, um, because I'm taught through visual, through these. Yes. Yeah. I'm very visual too. So yes. Mm -hmm. And so that was my confirmation that, oh man, something's up. Something's really up. Yeah. Yeah. And in the last episode, I discussed it on the air, so I will discuss it again. But I knew that I got that chill. Like you said, this chill. Yes. Ooh, okay. Yes. Because this is so beyond us. Yes. What's about to take place is so beyond. Yes, yes, and I think when I got those downloads, it was COVID and yes, after and what was it's still it's it's still happening, it and I saw you know the waterfall off, yeah. and which is very similar to the on Smith College. Yes, it is. That, I've taken a picture. That, of that. I love that. Waterfall. That that's sort of what I saw. That very you know with 2020 and the uh, and rubble, just rubble everywhere. Yes. Now we got the wars and plenty of rubble and <laughs> we have plenty, plenty of rubble. And then the other vision I had was. Was was like the oligarchs holding hands around the globe. Yes, and that's what's happening now. Yes. And you know, they're simple little flashes and stuff, oh, but it sure. tells the entire story of the last whatever years, sure. right? Um, uh, yeah. And again, again, like you, I do get uh, visual stuff. I that comes in mostly, I think, more with like Akashic records when I'm getting. Yeah, they'll show me a picture, and then I sort of know where to like where to take off from with with that. You know, I actually have. One of the photos in the slideshow from my first show mm -hmm. is of the Akashic Record book. Oh, so you might want to go back to it. Take so it, it it showed up in your picture. yellow and gold. I'd love to see it. I'd love to sit down with you with your pictures. And sure. I'd love you to like circle or show me because I want to start to see the way you see. Because I can't oh, see yes, it. Yes, exactly. I can't always see oh, it. I know it's there, but I can't always see what? it. <laughs> I think spiritually, it's like you see it when you're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why one of the key quotes for my work from the beginning, from actually 2007, mm -hmm. was George started it. It happened after he had open heart surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And is, do you see what, here's what we see. What do you see? Mm. Because it's very individual. Yeah. And it really in alignment with spirituality. Yes. Yes. So if you don't see, you're not a mentor. It's fine. Yes. You don't have yes. Well, but, yeah, but you and I can do that anyway about certain things. But when right. I go back to the slideshow, you will see her, and she's in gold. She's a black woman. Okay. With a veil on. Okay. And she's holding the book, and the book is the Akashic oh, Records. Well, I would love to see that. And that came to me through a window at Christmas time. I think it was two or three years ago, and I took a picture, and what came out is her. Because people come out through my window, when I take a picture of the window, they come out at the window. Okay. Um, anyway, you'll you'll see, and I okay. think you'll agree with me. And if you disagree, be, feel free to let yeah. me know that as well, of course. Yeah. But I think we should close the show soon. Okay. okay. I do want to ask you three little questions first. Mm -hmm. 
What's your favorite color? Mm, that's always hard. I think I'd have to go with uh, sort of a, a purpley blue, sort of that mm, indigo. Very nice. Deep, I, the colors of the northern lights, but the, yes. the deep purpley blue one. I'm okay, like great. What was your favorite song when you were a teenager? Mm, teenager. That's so hard. Um, let's see. Uh, well, there was uh, everything on Fleetwood Mac. Um, <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. Um, but Jimmy Cliff. There were some, you know, that's that album, The Harder They Come, The Harder They Fall. Yes. There, it was very activist, activisty kind of music. Yeah. Um, the Harder They Come, the, I don't. It's hard for me to pick one. That's fine. But um, you know, I, I gives us something. You can exactly. Yeah. I see. So okay. And then also, what's a favorite movie of yours? Mm. Again, there's so many that I love. Shawshank Redemption, because everyone oh, loves that. Yeah, that but there's a movie that I love because it's really a funny take on the Akashic Records, and it's Defending right. Your Life with Alan Brooks. That's an amazing that movie. Is a, it bounced, nobody, I think, that knows about it. That is amazing. That's probably my favorite movie. To people. Me too. It's so it's, true. It's, it's, I've never seen it told so well, because Hollywood always screws it up when they try yeah. to talk about this stuff. But that was perfect. Like they it was. Just, perfect. Albert Brooks, Meryl Streep. That's probably my favorite. There was yeah. a key card, if you don't mind my sharing, my yeah. favorite key card in that, and then maybe sharing yeah. the other one. When she was in the hotel, because of what you're traveling astrally after you die, so you're traveling. Right. She's in the hotel, I guess almost like a waiting room for the next stage of... Uh, after for their trial, or to know, well, they're try. You know, they're waiting on to do their trial. Yes, to spend their life. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow, how can I forget? Yeah. I'm sure that was the fortieth. Yeah, some kind of a subconscious block there, maybe. But um, and she said, and he said, "Well, do you miss how many children do you have?" She said, three. And she said, "Do you miss your children?" She goes, "I don't know." Interesting. I don't know. I don't remember that line. I don't know. To them now. So we had a little, and I thought, wow, that's, whoa, you know what I mean? Yeah, right? Yeah, that it's is. Parents and their children, they <laughs> forget it. So, well, there's that, that disconnect or the emotions aren't there they anymore. Are they just, uh, no. That is so strange. That is, yeah. that's, I've had, I'm, I've been wanting to rewatch it. It was so well acted. Yes. It was so yeah. well acted, Meryl Streep. But I just love the, his, those neurotic, you know, Rip Torn is his, you know, the lawyer and yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, his yeah, best yeah, yeah. to defend this, this yeah. is neurotic. Howard, uh, and his life, you know, in his hilarious. It really is. It's good yeah. movie. I want to thank you again. I, I need to ask you to please say again how people contact you. Okay. Do you prefer them to go to your website and contact you through the website? Or would you prefer them to call you? Okay. Wish you Any, anything goes. My website is ladybugbodymindhealing.com. I think on the front welcome page, there should be a, a contact me button. It'll take you to, you know, something you can fill out and contact me through there. Or Leslie at ladybugmodybodyhealing dot com is my email. Beautiful. And those are probably the easiest ways to do it. Beautiful. And thank you so much. Yeah. It's been so wonderful yes. to see you. I have loved it. Me too. It's been <laughs> wonderful. I hope everybody has enjoyed it. And please let us know. Contact us and let us know. And if you have any questions, please do write them to us. Thank you very much. <laughs>